what is up beautiful people i'm your host stephanie on no longer stranded first off thank you so much for tuning in to our last season and i want to welcome you to our very first episode of season two triggers it's tea time everyone let's go ahead and dive right in what's up beautiful people again i just want to thank you so much for listening and joining in on our new season and welcome to our newcomers i appreciate you guys for tuning in I hope you enjoyed the last episodes, the last season. Um, today, we're going to be talking about triggers. Why triggers? What causes triggers? Who causes triggers? Where do triggers come from? And when do triggers occur? Now, I don't know about you guys, but with me, when I hear triggers, it's more of a, something that, that brings me back to a traumatic time or something that someone does to me or... The actions that they take, whether it be in a response to a text message or a response to a question I ask in person, their body language, how they handle a situation when I'm acting a certain way, how they respond to me is a trigger. So, for example, let's say someone who was in a physically abusive relationship, right? They get out of it. They overcome it. Well, they don't overcome it yet, but they're still mentally dealing with this depression and someone goes in for a quick hug too soon for them and their hands go flying and all they're going to do is give them a hug but they don't know that that's a trigger for them their hands flying towards them is a trigger to them so they automatically defend themselves and put like a block towards their face and then you're looking at them like bro what's or what's wrong with you are you okay but you don't know what's going on with them because they don't talk about it nobody nobody talks about the things that are going on with them Physically, mentally, emotionally, nobody likes to talk about problems because they feel like it's a burden if they feel like nobody cares about their problems. They feel like, who, who am I to talk about? Who cares? It doesn't matter. But it does matter. And that's the, that's the problem. It does matter for the simple fact that it, it gets you into these deep depressions and it gets you into a dark hole where you feel like you're absolutely alone and you're not. That's the problem is that you're not alone and everybody just thinks that. It can also be as small as a simple text message. A simple text message from someone saying like, hey, so, you know, I noticed you didn't, you haven't responded to any of my text messages and it's been like three, four hours. Now, mind you, not everybody's on their phone 24 seven. I have a tendency of leaving my phone on my bed. That's now though, you know, for hours at a time and just forgetting about it or forgetting to reply to a text message because I've been so busy. But that can be a trigger for somebody because it's like their partner or the ex-partner was out there cheating on them and never answering their phone call. So now here they are texting you and you're not responding to them. So it's like they're freaking out. Are they cheating on me? Do they Are they not interested? Are they not being honest with me about how they feel? All these overthinking thoughts and self-doubt and insecurities start popping up about you. So now... You have a whole attitude towards that person. You know, when they do finally text you back, it's like, you know what? I'm going to be petty and just not text them back for hours too. Because instead of talking about it, instead of expressing how you feel, you you do childish things and, and reflect on them and, and start doing what they do to you back to them. And that's when a toxic cycle starts, you know, and that's how you continue with toxic people adding to their toxicness and then their toxicness adding to you and that was just like i said a cycle it just keeps going and recurring and then we find ourselves back at square one self-doubting insecurities and feeling worthless feeling like nobody nobody wants me you feel like you're unlovable and it's just not a fair feeling now i have triggers i have a lot of triggers the example that I just gave about the texting, yeah, that's about me. I had a lot of issues with people that I used to be with that would take hours and hours at the end of time to, to text me back. And uh, it made me feel like, damn, are you even interested? Do you even really want to try to see where this, is, where this goes? Am I making you happy? Is there something I'm doing? Am I unattractive? Am I needy? Am I like, am I overthinking this? And it, it, it all just came about me, you know, not like 
you know what, maybe it's them. They're not ready for a relationship. They're not ready for something serious. They're not ready for communication. I like to, I like communication. I'm sorry, but I like it when somebody says like, hey, good morning. I'm going to have a very busy day. Won't be able to talk to you, but I'll hit you up when I'm free. Like it's communication because if you don't communicate, the other person just drives themselves crazy. And I'm sorry if I'm the only one that thinks that, but that's just how I feel. And that triggers me. It triggers me when I go into a new relationship or even friendships too. If I go into a friendship and they just don't know how to communicate or they take hours, I feel like, damn, am I a bad friend? Like, why don't they want to hang out with me? And I start like overthinking all these things about myself and self-doubting and and feeling insecure and feeling unloved and unwelcomed and just it's just an overwhelming feeling and then the anxiety kicks in and it's like yeah you're definitely not worth it so then instead of going out and trying to clear my mind about it I just lay in bed and I just sit there and continue with these negative thoughts and beating myself up for it when I shouldn't be beating myself up for it instead of I should go out I should I should figure out what I like and be happy with myself because once you become whole with yourself you don't have to worry about what other people think you don't have to worry about why don't they want to text me who cares why they don't want to text you who cares they don't want to text you that's on them go find you somebody who will go find you somebody who wants to hang out with you go be around people who will surround themselves with you because they love themselves just like you love you but that's not where I was at. You know, where I was at was more of, I'm lonely, nobody wants me, so I'm going to continue being lonely, and I'm going to continue chasing after those people who want to show me that they don't want me, instead of just being blind and being like, listen, I'm not ready for this, or I see you this way, but I don't see you as a relationship type. So, you know, something real, something honest. Another topic of what triggers me is also the physical abuse. Now, here comes the tea, guys. So, I did, I was in a relationship. I dated this girl. Um, long story short, it just got more physical than the last episode. If you guys heard the last episode, you know that one was a train wreck. But this one, it was more, it was just a physical abuse. And things just got rough, dude. Like, it was crazy. But because of her... Anybody who tried to give me a hug right away, anybody who tried to move something. It, the other day, I went out to eat with my friend, and she went to put, like, toothpicks and pretend to be, like, this, like, seal or whatever it was that she was trying to do. She was just trying to be funny. And I thought, like, all I saw was hands going too fast to her, to, like, up in her face area and my face area, and I right away put my hands up. And that was three, four years ago, maybe five that was years ago, and I still had that trigger. I still had that trauma that I haven't healed inside of me. So people could be moving fast, and if it's coming towards me, I automatically get defensive. And I protect myself. I shield myself. And that was it's because it wasn't my first physical relationship that was abusive like that. It was probably maybe my second or third. And... I just dealt with it. I never healed myself. I never sat there and tried to figure out a way to patch that hurt, to overcome that and and, and see that as a stepping stone to a higher self of me. Instead, what I did was I threw it under the rug and I kept it moving, you know, until the next person who was just trying to give me a hug and I'm just sitting there like, freaking out and they're just trying to wonder like what's going on with you are you okay now if you think about it the who in a situation me now being like in this new mindset that i'm in i feel like the who causes traumatic stuff was me and the reason why i blame me for it is because i allowed those things to happen i never set boundaries I never set boundaries because I didn't know who I was. I didn't know that I could love myself the way I'm loving myself lately. And I didn't know that I could be happy with myself. I thought somebody else had to make me happy. I thought somebody could fill that void for me. So I allowed them to continue treating me like trash. Because it's like, oh, you know, deep down somewhere in there, they do love me. Because there are some days where they 
they just show me all this affection and they show me off and they pretend and that there you go there's that word pretend to care when reality is they're keeping you around to benefit them when they don't want to feel lonely it's like oh well so and so is always there for me so let me just let me hit them up right now because I'm I feel alone right now and that's what I mean in my other topics, in my other episodes, is when I tell you guys that hurt people hurt people, that's a legitimate thing. And that's because the people that I tend to be around, the people that I choose as partners or considered partners or once lovers, or people who are toxic, people who are hurting, they're dealing through their own traumas, their own triggers. And instead of healing from it, we hop on to other relationships, to other people. We look to other people to fill our void, to fill that happiness that we need to fill within ourselves first before we could be happy with somebody else. But we don't think about that. We don't think about that because we're too clouded and we're too in our thoughts and too tied up with anxiety. We are too accompanied with our negative side instead of being accompanied with the positive side. We sleep with the enemy every single day. You could be sleeping in the bed alone. That's cool. But you're still sleeping with the enemy every single day. You think negative every single day. You feel like you're worthless every single day. That you put yourself down and you're crying for no reason. And you feel like, why am I even here? That's you sleeping with the enemy. So until you fix that, you will never be happy. You will never completely be happy with anybody and not even yourself. But the old mindset that I was in would definitely put the blame on them. I put the blame on them because it's like, they're the one who are making me feel this way. They're they're doing the actions that they're doing. They know what they're doing, and they're doing it to me. When they claim they care for me, they claim they love me. You know, and this goes for friends too. This doesn't have to be based on just relationships. Mine just happens to be based mo- mainly on relationships because that's what I did. I like I said, I used other people as a tactic to fill my void, my happiness. This could go for all things family friends even work work could cause triggers for you guys you know a toxic boss a toxic co-worker it, it happens every day everywhere no matter what you do where you go um work could trigger a lot i mean work has triggered a lot for me as well you know especially with the whole past physical thing working in a restaurant and and having a lot of people walk by me so fast and so quick it's just it's Whatever environment you're in can be very triggering to you, especially if you have, you know, a history of abusive relationships, friendships. It could be mental abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse. It can happen anywhere, you know, and like I said in the beginning, it's a traumatic moment. So wherever you are, anything can happen that could trigger you and bring you back to that moment or moments that you had because it could be multiple things at once that hit you and that's where it gets bad that you have all these things hitting you at once or you have that one thing that's happened to you and it brings you all the way back and now you're in your bed in your head and your thoughts and you just feel so low about you you could have the greatest day ever and then that one thing someone does or says could just pull you all the way back And now that gray day just went down the drain. And you just don't care to do anything. You don't care to laugh anymore. You just want to get back home. Clock out of work and just leave. And get in your bed and just be depressed all night, all day. Crying your eyes out. Wondering, why am I not worthy enough? When is somebody going to love me? When is someone actually going to be there and care for me? When is someone going to be true to me? When are all these bad things going to stop happening to me? Reality, reality, sorry, reality is all those things will be healed and they can be healed. It just starts off with you. I learned that the hard way. I went through so many traumatic situations with friendships, with relationships even family stuff that just I just kept asking myself why why is this happening it's happening because I allowed it to happen 
It's happening because I didn't set boundaries. It's happening because I didn't love myself to set boundaries. It's happening because I sat there for years thinking that I deserved to be treated the way I got treated by all these people. And nobody deserves to get treated any type of way except the way that you want to be treated. You want to be treated right? Love yourself. You want to be with someone who's going to care for you. You want to be with somebody who's going to not praise you, but like lift you up and lift your spirit, make you a better you. But the only person that can do that is you. And once you do that, you find somebody who has the same equalness of happiness. And then you find somebody who adds to your happiness, not someone who makes you happy. Because why are you going to find somebody who makes you happy? And then once they leave, guess what? You're stuck. You're stuck being the same sad, depressed person. But now it's ten times worse because that happiness that they gave you is gone. It didn't stick around. It didn't stay. It left with them. But if you love yourself, if you take care of yourself, you don't have to worry if that person leaves. If they leave, okay. I'm okay with myself. I'm good. I'll be alright without you. That's where you guys need to be. And that's where I'm not 100% there, but I'm getting there. You know, it's not easy. It's a working progress. But it's something that can be done. It's something that people can do. You can get out of this. You don't need someone else. You might want them, but you don't need them. So that's exactly why I picked today's title. Triggers, because a lot of people have triggers, whether it's relationships with work, friendships, family, everybody has a trigger. And it's normal, it's okay, it happens, and it's okay to have triggers, it's okay to react to them, but you have to heal them. Heal them from what's inside, from within you. You gotta not reminisce, but rethink everything that happened, and try to figure out a way to let go of that situation. Forgive yourself. For allowing that to happen to you. And forgive them for the actions that they took to make you have these triggers. And once you do those two things, and it's not easy, it's a work in progress. It's going to be one of those things that you have to continuously do. Like religiously sit there and just think about the situation, forgive it, and let go and move on from it. You have to have that willpower to move on from it. And once you do so, it's... It's a blessing after that. You can move on and you can be happy. Like I still have triggers with certain things. There are things that I learned to rethink about and and sit there and learn about the situation and analyze everything and forgive myself and forgive them and move on and let go from it. But there are still things that I still need to work on. Like I said, it's a work in progress. But it can be done. So I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention to normalize triggers, to normalize depressions, to normalize anxiety. Everybody doesn't talk about it because they don't feel like it's normal. But at the end of the day, what's really normal? What's considered normal? You know, if everything was normal, everything would be the same. Everybody would be the same. And then it would be boring at that. Be yourself, be unique, but find yourself in order to be unique. With that being said, that is the end of today's podcast. I want to thank you guys so much for listening, for tuning in. Tune in next week for the new episode, episode number two of season two. I'm so grateful for that. But again, thank you guys so much. If you ever need anything, any questions, comments, a topic you would like to talk about, you're more than welcome to me. Welcome to email me at strengtheningwithsteph at gmail.com. Or you can go ahead and follow my Instagram, strengtheningwithsteph, and my other Instagram, no longer stranded. Thank you guys. Have a blessed day.